Hello fellow plant enthusiasts. So in this video I'm going to transplant this Dendrobium kingianum, Australian rock orchid, into a larger pot. Now typically when you plant orchids you can choose either long fibrous sphagnum moss or pine bark. And I like to use the long fibrous sphagnum moss because it retains moisture better so the orchid grows. This orchid I purchased off clearance from um, Lowe's one time. It was like four bucks only for a young Phalaenopsis. And it's already happening here. I just took the pot and stuck it as a plug and surrounded it by sphagnum moss. And I have it against the west facing window and you can see that the sphagnum moss is actually starting to grow as well. And you can see over here, I recently watered it, it's going to drip a little, but you have a little stub here where a new root, root is growing. Let me turn it to the back, you can see more, some nice fresh aerial roots with fresh growth. So hopefully this may, by next year, I hope it will flower. But that's a beautiful, healthy, happy orchid. I had purchased one time a keiki of a Dendrobium kingianum off eBay and it didn't have a good root system. I planted it on a rock and it didn't really survive very well. And you know, these grow on rocks, so it's supposed to, but the roots, you know, I didn't realize it at the time, but after looking back, the roots were like damaged. So I, I received a bad one. This one, I purchased it in November. It only had these two taller canes, including the missing leaf on this one. And I bought this from Seagrove Orchids down in Seagrove, North Carolina. It was only like five bucks. I didn't really want to buy any more expensive orchids because I really needed to first get better at keeping orchids alive. You know, it's one of these things where some people, they buy plants and certain varieties they can't keep alive and they die. But me, I'll keep trying, you know? So anyway, and then it produced this new cane and then this other one. So anyway, it looks nice in this pot. And by using sphagnum moss and being in a terracotta pot, it helps it evaporate to keep the roots from, you know, basically being waterlogged because orchids like to, the roots like to breathe. You have early roots because they're typically epiphytic, although you have some like this one that's a terephytic and then others that are terrestrial. But I'm gonna put this in this other pot and by setting it in here first, you can see that it looks good in that pot. So I'm going to start by, whoopsie, we don't want to damage Hermie. So I'm going to start by putting a little bit of moss in the bottom. And you know, I'm just going to compact it in there if I have to. And then I'm gonna pull this up, if I can, without damaging it. It might be attached to the pot, so I'm gonna to have to get something to poke in here and push it up. So let me go and do that quickly. So I have this thing to push, and I don't wanna to push too hard and damage the roots. And Orchid does not want to come out. So I may want, I wonder if I watered it first, if it will work. I don't want to break the pot. And just sticking it in here like that defeats the purpose of having it in a larger pot. But let me try a little more. I'm going at an angle. I don't know if any of you viewers have had this situation before. So if you're able to leave a comment on what method you do to extract an orchid from a pot without damaging the roots. You know, I want to make sure I don't damage this because, ooh, because I do like the fact that this thing is happy. But I got it, and it looks fine. You can see how they had the roots were wrapping around, so it would be happy in a larger pot. So let me see if I can salvage any of this extra moss. I 
I did lose one root, but just a small one like that, it should recover. And I'm just putting uh, some sphagnum moss along the sides. And I can lift this up if I want it a little higher. And what's nice is I have a stick so I can push this sphagnum moss down in here and make sure it's embedded well so it has enough moisture retention for the orchid. But this orchid I would water just once a week and make sure that the sphagnum moss is fully saturated, put it back in front of the window, and it is actually also behind a plant in a mug that I have, so it's not really just right against the window, but the leaves do receive some bright light and then, you know, a little direct light in the afternoon. Because these grow on rocks, you know, I think they can do better with bright light, whereas some of the orchids that grow on trees, maybe they're used to more of the shade from the tree, from the growth above. I'm, I'm just not an expert on orchids, but I'm just happy that this one is happy and now it's going to be in the bigger pot so it can grow even more. But the Dendrobium kingianum is considered the hardest orchid to kill. Of course, I've managed in the past, but hopefully not with this one because it's happy. And I feel like I have enough sphagnum moss. You don't want it too compact so that the roots can spread. And then I'm going to have to make sure that I Trans when I transplant this, I think that might be too much. Um, when I transplant this, that I don't wait too long before I do so it's not fully stuck to the pot. This pot here has a smaller drainage hole. You know, it's harder to stick that in. I'll need the thinner stick, so it's going to be trickier to um, transplant when I have to uproot it. But all in all, I have a nice, happy dendrobium and. Uh, it's sure to be, you know, ecstatic being in a much um, bigger or slightly bigger pot. But I do need to move this over so it's more centered. Find a small piece that fits in there. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're not a subscriber, please make sure you subscribe so you can be up to date on my latest videos. Albeit, I will be very busy the next uh, month or so, maybe even two months. So keep that in mind if you don't see me posting videos as regularly as I used to. But I hope you enjoyed this video. 
Thanks for watching and happy planting.